welcome to Tom's Messy Arm Vlog, episode 9. And it amused me to sit on the floor amidst the wreckage of my study. Um, so uh, that that accounts for the organ being the wrong way around. I'm not sort of, what would I be? I would be suspended from the ceiling looking down on the console, wouldn't I? Anyway, my, my co nothing to do with the Messy Arm Vlog, but my um, study is being done up at the moment because uh, I've got a pipe organ arriving in November, which I can't wait for. Anyway, um, this vlog will be a short one and what I had intended to talk about was freedom in music making it's a big subject uh, and I prepared something beautiful that's actually I'm going to do it next time I'm sorry I'm going to hold it over for another one um, because uh, something's come up and that is that the Messiaen performance has been postponed it was supposed to take place in November at Westminster Cathedral and it's now going to happen Ooh, who knows next year sometime maybe even to 2022 so um, how I feel about that really doesn't matter particularly, but um, since you asked, uh, briefly, I, I had come to the conclusion myself that I didn't really want this big event uh, to consist of a denuded audience, a reduced number of people um, wearing masks for two hours of Messiaen. It didn't sound very nice to me. I didn't want to put anybody else through it. So uh, I felt a sense of relief to that extent, at least, uh, when the decision came through that it had been postponed. However, uh, disappointed, of course, because I've put a lot of energy into it, um, and apprehensive about when the next one will, when, when the next date will be. Will, will it happen at all? That sort of thing. But anyway, I thought this was actually an opportunity to talk briefly about the concept of taking a break. I spoke uh, in a previous episode about that moment that I sometimes reach in the music learning process where I sort of feel like I should know the notes but it, it's sort of not coming out that way and my, my head needs sorting out a little bit um, and it's that's the point at which I'm starting to prepare for performance um, and it is often a good moment to actually take some time out and I was thinking about doing that I was thinking about having a week or two off and away from the music and uh, just anecdotally I know a number of uh, colleagues who find that that can be really helpful and um, the a number of people I've spoken to just recently about that subject just out of curiosity really who finds that uh, just to stave off the risk of getting all sort of caught up in all the sort of ah, or am I getting the notes right or whatever it happens to be, um, just to stop getting fed up with the music, perhaps in some cases, a bit tired of it, um, taking a break can really help. And then you come back and you're fresh and you find uh, uncannily um, that the, 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 your, your brain has, seems to have done some work in the meantime and, uh, and your playing of the piece has actually improved for having had that rest. I know one performer, for example, um, who, and I, I, this feels risky to me, but it works for him, um, who actually lays down pieces of music for a week's rest immediately prior to the performance. So a week before the performance will be the last time he practices it and then maybe the day before or two days before he'll do some slow practice, get it up and running again and then perform it and he finds that's the way of feeling fresh and excited about the music in performance. Somebody else I was speaking to, noted performer of Messian as it happens, uh, she said that uh, she, you know, she's often found it helpful over the years uh, to leave pieces to marinate, and that's absolutely my experience. Now, before I finish this short vlog, I just wanted to share with you, um, I was reading about this. I wanted to find out if there's any research um, about this, This, you know, if there's any sort of neurological basis for this or whatever. Um, and I, I need to do more research on this because I couldn't find much, I've got to be honest. Uh, and even my wife, who did a neuroscience degree, couldn't lay her hand on um, on anything that was really helpful for the purposes of talking about music making. So if any of you have got any ideas or any interesting um, pieces of research that you've, you've come across, then do please let me know. It'd be really interesting to find out. What I did come across concerned rats in a maze. Uh, I'm a pretty good big rat, but sometimes messy young can feel like a maze, of course. Um, now, what this particular study uh, involved in, uh, I think it's about 2002, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, so a reputable outfit, of course. Um, uh, they placed rats in a maze uh, with electrodes in their brains so they could see what the what the rats, what was going on in the rats' brains, uh, which neurons were firing when and all that sort of stuff. Uh, they placed the rats in a maze and looked at what was happening in the rat's brain while it was learning its way around the maze. The electrodes were kept on the head and the rat went to sleep later on, and while it was sleeping, they found that the same patterns of the same neurons were firing while the rat was sleeping, but at a faster rate, and only the bits of the maze where they were actually having to think, not the bits where their brains were at rest. So in other words, all the, um, all the sort of processing stuff that was going on whilst in the maze was then repeated while the rat was asleep. Perhaps the rat was dreaming its way through the maze, who knows? Um, but it suggests, perhaps, that what happens when we, you know, we do all our music learning, um, 
but then we go away from it and it can often be the case that the brain is filing stuff and processing it even though we're not actually playing um, and I, that I think probably accounts for the fact that sometimes a few days away from the music and certainly some good decent quality sleep can make a huge huge difference so I have put the Messiaen down for a short break I might as well because I don't have a performance in the diary anymore uh, but I am going to pick it up again in just uh, maybe a couple of weeks and I'm going to carry on doing these vlogs but slightly less frequently uh, maybe once a month and um, until until I've completed the process and um, you know, hopefully that will continue to be an interesting thing for you to watch but anyway I'm going to take a break hence this subject um, being the subject of today's vlog sat on the floor next to an upturned organ anyway there we go so that's episode nine I shall be back next week with uh, episode 10 on musical freedom um, and if you want to do some reading before then well take a look we're talking now about freedom of interpretation with Messiaen's music. That you know, might be the rhythms, it might be the silences, whatever. Um, take a look at the preface to the quartet for the end of time, and you'll find some contradictory statements from the composer himself, or apparently contradictory statements. There's a book published by Ashgate called uh, Perspectives on French Pianism that has a chapter uh, on Messiaen's piano playing, and it refers in considerable depth uh, to Messiaen's practice as a performer based on the recordings that we have of him playing the piano in various different contexts. There's also an excellent piece uh, by Peter Hill in another Ashgate publication. It's a book called Olivier Messiaen Music, Art and Literature and that is also extremely interesting. It, it looks at various different recorded performances of one of Messiaen's piano music and compares those with Messiaen's own recording, the only solo recording of him playing the piano. Of course as organists we have many recordings of him playing the organ, we're very lucky. Um, but uh, the picture that all of these things reveal about Messiaen as a performer uh, is, is very interesting and it's slightly at odds with the concept of an objective modernist composer, which of course Messiaen wasn't in so many ways. But that is precisely what I shall be talking about. So I shall leave you to it and see you next week. Thanks very much.